Welcome to episode 2 of season 4 here at Hull City. Thank you for all of your feedback on yesterday's episode. I've added a number of names to my shortlist and a couple of things have been brought to my attention. Most notably, actually, that Stir You has potential to be special. I hadn't noticed that. The eagle-eyed of you spotted that there. So we have three has potential to be special players. Stir You, Bennett, or Barnett even, and... Um, Luciano, Luciano, Leonardo Pinto. Also, what was mentioned that I'd forgotten entirely from season one is that Pinto was originally a winger or a left mid or right mid. I, I can't remember, but you guys did. And we moved him to Cam because of his lack of pace at the time. However, he does now have banging pace. So we could use him as a wide player in the future if we don't get on with him in the position he's in. To then uh, utilise Ivan Tony or utilise another midfielder in that spot and use him out wide so we don't have to buy in as many wingers. Uh, there is some call to maybe, if we don't get on with Barnett at striker, to go back to the old formation, put Barnett back in that centre forward spot, put Wilkes at striker, and then we can use Pinto on the wing. Follow? If you, if you didn't, rewatch it. If Barnett doesn't work at striker, we could use Barnett back to centre forward in the 4 4 1 1, move Wilkes from strike right wing to a striker where Ivan Tony used to be. That gives us an upgrade on striker, and then move Pinto wide right in the starting 11 uh, because he used to be a winger, and then that means that Gallagher and Wallace can stay in the starting lineup as the two holding midfielders. That makes sense to me. Uh, that also a call to not sell DeAndre Yedlin, but because of his injury proneness. To sell Joshua Emmanuel at right back. We are needing perhaps a little bit money, more money than we have to make a central midfield signing that we would like. And the call is from you guys to sign someone that is more defence minded than Gallagher. He's not in a CDM position in the formation, but he is the most defensive of the three I have in midfield. His defending is 63 currently with 69 stand tackle. So you guys have called for perhaps... Someone that's slightly more defence-minded to start there. And for either Gallagher and Wallace or Gallagher or Wallace to drop to the bench. I'd probably drop Gallagher to the bench because Wallace is the potential to be special. So that we don't stunt his growth. Uh, but then having Gallagher as a potential backup on the bench would be superb. So we currently have £28.67 million to spend. I have a number of players on the shortlist. And also Joshua Emmanuel is now on the transfer list valued at 15 and a half million pounds that would free up enough money to then be able to go out and buy a, uh, a really tasty central midfielder for the starting lineup and uh, we'll be able to improve them they are is going to continue on at right back still going to take two years or there or thereabouts to retrain him at center back by which point we'll have got the money to uh, replace him and then deandre ed lincoln remain my backup right back and he's perfectly good enough to do so so Happy enough with that. Shortest loan offer is still ongoing. We have the following on the shortlist for that central defence-minded midfield spot. Ibrahim Sangare, currently at uh, PSV. Got a release clause of 54.4 million. Don't know what he's rated at. We'll wait and see. What his current value is, I'm not sure either. Harry Winks, although he's currently valued higher than I can afford. Matteo Ginduzi, although he's currently valued higher than I can afford. Lucas Toussaint who's got a release clause of 36.4, so we probably have enough to be able to bargain a deal for him. Uh, Daniel Batty, you guys asked to see what he's like now, if he's grown at all. A release clause of 12 million says to me he's not grown any further than uh, he had done when we let him go, at least not significantly so either. Anyway, uh, Billy Gilmore is down as a centre mid or cam, but it says that stand tackle is one of his standout attributes, so he could perhaps... Be the player that fills that void. We'll wait and see. Obviously, got uh, good agility, reactions, vision, ball control, dribbling, long pass and short pass as well. So it would suit my style of play. It could be look like a deep-lying defensive playmaker. Curtis Jones is on the list as well. Again, these guys that have question, question marks next to them, I don't know what they're valued at. Julian Weigel is a player that uh, I'm not sure how recently he moved to Benfica. I don't know as he's at Benfica in real life. I will actually check that, actually. Julian Weigel, are you at Benfica in real life? He is. So he's been at Benfica for uh, a little while in this save now. Formerly of Dortmund, obviously, Julian Weigel. So uh, we'll see if we... Actually, is he? Or did I... I, I know I've used Weigel at Dortmund. 
But I don't know whether that was actually him as a Dortmund player or whether I bought him to Dortmund. He was a Dortmund player. Okay, I wasn't losing my mind. At least not on this occasion anyway. Uh, Joe Willock was recommended. He doesn't have any stars next to his tackling stats. So I don't know if he's going to suit the role that we're looking for. So we have a number of players there as options. We know how much money we currently have to spend. But there's still more to be raised. We've Manchester United at home to start the episode off with the gameplay. DeAndre Yedlin says, now that you've changed your mind, uh, uh, I'll say you're too valuable. In fact, in actual fact, you're not valuable enough, meaning that I can't <laughs> sell you on for as much as I can sell on Joshua Emmanuel. And I need that extra money raised if we're to be able to afford a player of the sort of quality that we're wanting. So for the time being, Shorter has agreed the short-term loan to go to... Uh, TSV Prolactal Hartberg. Hmm. Never heard of them. So, Manchester United at home to come as the first played game of the episode. Unless we get a transfer bid for Joshua Manley. In the meantime, which we do from Frankfurt of £16.3 million. I will negotiate. I'd love about 20-ish if I can get it. He is 25. So, in what could be considered the beginning of his prime years as a defender... I'll ask for 22 and see if they'll negotiate from there. I hope that they'll come up to about 18 or 19. Uh, I'd love 20, though. If you give me 20, look, you've come up a bit. I'll come down a significant amount more. Give me 20. Yes, Frankfurt. That'll do. That'll do nicely. 20 million for Joshua Emmanuel will open up all of the doors we've lined up to potentially open with everybody that's on our shortlist. Ah. Sorry, Joshua. You're not going to be playing in this one. But our first home game of the league season. Then we got a draw against Crystal Palace. What can we do against Manchester United? Right, Manchester United's starting lineup: Vlakadimos in goal. Wan-Bissaka, Marquinhos, Akanji, Brandon Williams. Wilfred Ndidi, Casemiro. Gnabry, Bruno Fernandes, Rashford and Martial. Well, that's an entirely different looking... Manchester United side, De Gea on the bench, Sula on the bench, new signing Dominic Calvert-Lewin on the bench as well. Right, um, I expect to lose this. Bruno Fernandes on the counter for Manchester United, little back heel and Casemiro plays him in again and Rashford's in behind and Reece Burke's trying his best to stick up with the Englishman. He's found Serge Gnabry who's overrun it, but a penalty's been given as I slid in to try and block the shot. Stir, you've caught the man. I should have just done nothing with the heavy touch. I should have just left it and let the keeper deal with it. He's gone over me after the ball has gone. Ref! Oh. Manchester United and penalties, eh? Jurgen Klopp would have a field day. Oh, and he's just penenkered it into the bottom corner there, Bruno Fernandes. Cheeky little penalty. They lead by a goal to nil, but... Shouldn't have been a pen. Shouldn't have been a pen. Oh. Nicely done into Bruno Fernandes. They're going to have to be careful with Stay, you know. He's on a yellow card very early on in the game. Last thing we need against Manchester United is to lose the defender and go down to 10 men. Akanji out wide to Williams. On to Bruno Fernandes. Onside. Rashford played in. He's got options. One of which is Casemiro. And George Long makes the save again, as he did last time. But he gave away a penalty because... <sighs> Rashford with the corner. Decent delivery. Flicked on by Akanji, but straight at George Long again. Across to Wallace. Trying to get away from Casemiro. Admittedly, thought it would have been slightly easier to do that. Lovely ball by Charlie Barnett through to Keane Lewis Potter. Duck inside on the right foot. Let the shot fly! Good save by Vlacadimos. No goal back for Hull City. Well worked by the team. Unfortunately, well saved by their man between the sticks. Wambisaka. Well done, Stu. You stood firm. Keen Lewis Potter's there. And because Wan-Bissaka's pushed forward, he's now not where he should be defensively. And Charlie Barnett's played in here. Akanji is quick, though, as a defender. Not got many options in the box. We'll lay it back there to Keen Lewis Potter. Get through the gap now to Leonardo Pinto. Charlie Barnett's back on it. And again, Odysseus Vlacadimos makes the save. Wallace with the corner. Up we go. Martial wins the header. Keep that in, please. Well done. Drill it to the man here on the edge of the box. That's Charlie Barnett. They are. Oh, Pinto standing up. Wilkes, yes! A goal against Manchester United at the KCOM. 
Malik Wilts with the header. No stopping that one. Thank you, Vlacadimos. We are level. Williams forwards to Rashford. Williams. Nicely done. Williams to Martial. Back to Rashford again. A number of options. Martial's one of them. Burke will get involved defensively here. Rashford finds Casemiro. He's had one shot saved already. Bayar goes in firmly. Could have gone to ground there. Oh, no, I wasn't where that was supposed to go. Could have gone to ground there, the Manchester United man, and maybe won them another penalty. It was a, a solid challenge. That was more of a pen than the first one. Rashford back towards Williams. Lifted over to Rashford again. Plenty of time to get a ball into the middle and find a teammate. Burke does well. Rashford goes to ground again. No foul given. And half-time comes along at 1-1. Well, Man United could have had three penalties. They got one that wasn't one. And it's 1-1. One, one. Right? Gallagher's arriving. And they've tucked in there. Deli Alley to Real Madrid. Hello, look out. Wilkes with the turn. Ah, it's a slow one. It's a poor one. But thankfully he's kept the ball. Gallagher. Barnett. Lifts it. Oh, Pinto made a great run. Excellent defending from Manchester United. And now on the counter-attack. Says Gnabry could punish us. Like, look at Bruno Fernandes getting through the middle. Busting a gut to get in there. In support, Gnabry has Martial there, has Rashford there. Tackled by Burke, delays too long on the ball. Oh, there's a press. There's a press. Pinto, come on, Keane. You drew a save at the keeper earlier. Let's get a goal, shall we? I'll lay this. No, he's overrun the ball. Oh, heavy touch. And now we're on the back foot again. Jesus Christ, this is end to end. So is Gnabry with the back heel. I can't push too far forward towards the man because oh what a lunging tackle that was and again ah that's definitely a foul I've caught the man there just the yellow oh, okay half an hour to go Burke's tired I'm going to take Burke off take Burke off for McLaughlin and that'll be the only change we make for now half an hour to be played still 1-1 here and the ball is flying from one end to the other Rashford with a free kick away by Sturyu Kanji. Marquinhos, Rashford, Gnabry, oh, changed player twice there accidentally, Wilfred and Didi, back to Wan-Bissaka, quickly to Gnabry again, back to Wan-Bissaka, going backwards, that's what we like, Marquinhos into Ndidi, he's got options out wide, Gnabry has Wan-Bissaka forward but he might be offside, Trying to keep the ball in play, though. Gnabry has done well to do so. Cross needs to come in. He's found a teammate. It's Wilfred Ndidi. It's a nice turn. Back here is Martial. Running out of room. Bruno Fernandes gets the shot off. And George Long again makes the save. Not Premier League quality, some people said. Proving you wrong with every given game so far. Bruno Fernandes to take the corner. Robert Lewandowski on for Manchester United. And that driven... Low, hard and wide by Wilfred and Didi. Very nearly, he hit it into the ground, very nearly struck the leg of Barnett, who just hung a leg very calmly and watched it go out for a goal kick rather than accidentally deflecting it. Back inside for maybe an own goal or a Man United man. Oh, and breathe. 18 minutes to go. Bruno Fernandes round the corner to Lewandowski. Back to Casemiro. I'm worried about Lewandowski getting in behind. Can't let him have even a tenth of a yard, let alone half a yard to get a shot away. It'll go in the back of the net. Brandon Williams, I'll have that. Thank you. It's their throw. 11 minutes to go. Williams to take it. He's got a couple of options. There's Bruno Fernandes. Rashford. Fernandes away, please. Well up, stay. You Counter. Come on. Let's go. Ah, no. Brandon Williams got back quicker than I could get the ball to Malik Wilkes. Casemiro, Bruno Fernandes. Nice turn, stays in the way. Still, we can't get rid of it. 2-1. Manchester United 2, Hull City 1. Used to be my go-to celebration on Ultimate Team a couple of years ago. Serge Gnabry rubbing it in my face now. They are forward to Wilkes. There is still time to grab an equaliser, Lee. You're right. We just need to grab it, which we can't do. Bruno Fernandes steps in, indeed he... Back to Casemiro. All they need to do now is just hold possession, Manchester United. And they'll have some have themselves the three points that they thought were going to be easier to come by, to be honest, at the KCOM. Brandon Williams back to Rashford. Didn't see that coming. And he's got support. There's a third. Okay. They deserve that one. Very well worked. 
I'm not sure Man United would celebrate quite so wildly about winning in the or extending their lead in the last minute against Man against um, Hull, but never mind, eh? Well done, lads. Celebrate those three points as if it's the title that you've won. You've literally just beaten the whole city, a recently promoted side. Admittedly, yes, we're a promoted side that has a starting eleven that could quite easily hold its own in the top half, which is where I imagine or I hope that we'll finish this season, but. They've just had the, the extra little bit of quality that we haven't had in this game. And the extra bit of luck that Manchester United always seem to get in the penalty area. Make of that what you will. 3-1 win for the Red Devils, unfortunately. And we lose. Probably deserved the result, but maybe not the manner in which they got it. Or at least the first goal. Maybe even the second as well. That was a mistake for me, wasn't it? Schulter loaned out. He's gone to Hartberg. Right, up next, Liverpool... Unless... Oh, an offer for Cartwright. Okay. Bye! Confirmation. Joshua Emmanuel sold to Frankfurt for £20 million. 16 of which will go into our transfer budget. Meaning we have £44.5 million-ish available in the budget to make a new signing. That new signing will come in in central midfield, of course. Uh, let me go and have a quick train. I'm waiting on the scout report, so I'm not going to make a, a decision yet. So I'll just go and have a quick train, and then I'll probably end up seeing you in the game against Liverpool before we have the opportunity to get any of those scout reports back. Liverpool's starting lineup: Allison in between the sticks, Trent, Van Dijk, Jenne, and Robertson, Guevara, Fabinho, and Saul. Front three is the front three, isn't it? As ever. On the bench, Luis Felipe, Diogo Jota, Tiro Mobile. They've got options, Liverpool. And, well, starting 11's not that bad either, is it? Mane in behind. That pace is a bit difficult to deal with, even when Bayard does have some of his own. Stoyu with a good header away. Positive start for Stoyu on this occasion. Oh, God, I needed Pinto's dribbling there and close control, and to be fair, that pass was pretty damn good as well, actually. Oh, but Andy Robertson in the way. Former Hull man, of course. We may, we may, at some point in this save, look to bring back players like... Oh, God, no, Mo Salah. Yes, what a block. And George Long. We may look to bring back players like Andy Robertson, maybe Harry Maguire, although I'm not sure how good Maguire might be. Andy Robertson would be great, but I'm not even sure, I'm not even sure whether I'd want Harry Maguire, to be honest. He's obviously not starting for Manchester United as you... Oh, I nearly dangled a leg there for Fabinho. Oh... Maguire didn't start for Manchester United in the last game, did he? So maybe he's not even in their squad anymore. Maybe we could realistically sign Harry Maguire back in, say, January if we need a centre-back. We'll wait and see. At the minute, I'm quite happy with my centre-back. Stay, you're still growing well. Rhys Burke is growing well. And McLaughlin is good enough. Ah, that's annoying. I'm really annoyed. Ah, I need to... Oh, such is the difference between the Championship and the Premier League. Just cutthroat no mistakes and they are so clinical Firmino to Guevara I don't know anything of him Firmino to Fabinho on oh, space for Mane back to Fabinho again trying to pull the strings from deep here Fabinho Guevara to Firmino Mane's on the overlap squared it across they're cutting me apart yep the quality difference between the championship and the Premier League is evident to see Gallagher threw the gap nicely to Barnet actually and here's Wallace Barnet's going again he's calling for it we'll play him into the channel he's stolen it away from one defender he's gotten away from the other just need a teammate now there's Rob Wallace good footwork from him Gallagher I see the runs Wilkes get there first yes Malik Wilkes oh he's didn't pull his weight as much as the other front three or the other front four last season Criticised for doing so, but he's our go-to goal scorer in the Premier League, it seems. Malik Wilkes was the first man to score a goal in the Premier League for Hull City. He was the second man to score a goal in the Premier League for Hull City. And he's the third man to score a goal for Hull City in the Premier League. We've scored three goals this season. They've all been scored by Malik Wilkes. 2-1. <laughs> Looking forward for Barnett. Oh, my God. Oh, on the counter-attack. Malik Wilkes in behind. Jenny with me. Jenny with me. I have to. Oh, Virgil van Dijk gets back. 
Such an easy ball to square across. And Malik's fluffed it. Key Lewis Potter can't believe it. And neither can I. That should be 2 2. Oh, God. We're not going to get an opportunity that easy again. Inside to Pinto. Can we start the second half on the front foot? We've given a, a relatively decent account of ourselves in all three Premier League games so far. Yes, lacking probably personally more so than the team on occasion. West Ham take a 2 0. I thought I said Arsenal for a minute. I was like, hello. Matty Cash gives him a second against Aston Villa. Side that won the championship ahead of us last season. No, not last season. The season before. Oh, Bobby Firmino buries it. Aston Villa won it the year before, didn't they? It was Brighton that won it last year. Bobby makes it three in front of the cop. And that's probably all she wrote now, isn't it? A brief fight back. That was everything that that said. Brief. Barnet. Back to stay. Forward to Pinto. Oh, he's quick. He's really quick. Pinto's so much better than he was when he left. I mean, that's kind of a Michael Owen obvious kind of thing to say when he was 82 when he left and he's 89 now. But still, he's so much better than he was when he left. I'm glad we've made the decision to keep him at the club, at least for this first season. Sadio Mane driving in behind. Out to Robertson. Cross could come in. Here's Mane. And into the middle. Up we go. Elder couldn't get... Oh, George! That's the first thing you've done that's made me question... Anything, I think in this entire save, that's the first worrying thing that George Long has done. Alex Oxlade Chamberlain coming off the bench for Liverpool to replace Sal Nicuez. And they will keep their 3-1 lead for the time being. Stay forward towards Lewis Potter. Dian Garner has come on in the cam position for, oh, for Leonardo Pinto. And Dian Garner is in. And Dian Garner scores for Hull City. Hello, game on. Well, as much as I was saying positive... About Pinto, Dian Garner in the camera has just arrived on the field and within minutes scored a goal. Pinto hasn't done that. Pinto's still been great. But what an impact Dian Garner's had off the bench to bring one back. It's 3-2. The fight back wasn't brief. The fight back continues. Mane, 20 minutes to go. Robertson, Mane, Robertson again. Back to Gen 8. And drilled forward to Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. It was a substitute that's made the difference for us, at least briefly. But could it be for them? Barnett. Dian Garner. Oh, the run! Keen Lewis Potter at Anfield in front of the travelling Hull fans. Saved by Alisson. Ah! Pretty entertaining, this Premier League football stuff, isn't it? Unbelievable couple of games so far today, Manchester United. And Liverpool, Salah lofts that back towards the middle where Firmino's waiting. Lovely little cushioned head around the corner to Oxley chamberlain Mane shot deflects off probably two defenders. And George Long can pick up the loose ball. Oh, and breathe. Ten minutes to go. Still 3-2. Firmino out to Trent Alexander-Arnold. Cross could come in. Cross could come in. It hasn't yet. He's getting away from me though. Cross does come in. It's blocked, but it still falls to Salah. Don't foul him, Tez. Don't give away another penalty. Bobby Firmino tackled by Sturyu. Turn on it, Dian Garner. And we're off. Ah, Barnett went to make the run and then stops. But Dian Garner still finds him. Barnett looking for Dian Garner through the gap. Who's got the legs? He or Jenny? It's the defender with three minutes to go. We've had two chances now like that. One much more obvious than the other. King Lewis Potter. To give ourselves an equalising goal here at Anfield. And it just hasn't been forthcoming. Bayar, oh, it's a poor pass from Wallace Bayar. Tried to play a through ball to get him away from Mane and pushing further forward. And it hasn't worked. Sadio Mane has the option of Firmino. And that's game over. Oh, what could have been today? What could have been? Jurgen Klopp and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer celebrating wildly against Hull City. Speaks everything for the reputation of the club coming up from the championship. For people to celebrate quite so ferociously when beating us. But you would have expected the results to go the way they did so far. But not necessarily in the manner that they did. We fought back. We fought well. We fought hard. We didn't fight hard enough. Just a point then from our first three games. But finally someone other than Manit Wilkes scores a goal. Welcome to the Premier League Goal Scorers Club. Uh, 
Dn Garner. Ah, oh, we brighten away in the cup midweek. Ugh, that's not a game I'm even remotely interested in. Give me those scout reports. That's what we care about. Going to sim this game against Brighton. To be fair, I'll probably do the same for the Southampton game as well. Just wondering, boss. Are you wondering? Greaves, a loan offer from Salzburg. Uh, yes, we will delegate, though, just the one-year loan. Always come in with a loan to buy. Uh, Andrew, have you got a chance to be... Uh, go on, then. Yeah, no, let's rotate for the game against Brighton. Why not? I can do that, can't I? Okay, never mind. Right, cracking on. Then let's go and sim this game against Brighton. And maybe we can get through to the next round of the cup. Maybe we can't. Not bothered this year. We aren't. We're out. Okay, good. We wanted to focus on Premier League survival this year. We will have the opportunity to do that. Uh, moving forward from here, uh, unless we get any scout reports back, I will see you in the game against Southampton. Some players away on international duty, which hopefully shouldn't be a bit of an issue now we're at Premier League level. It wasn't too much of an issue at Championship level either. Greaves has agreed to go to uh, Salzburg in the Swiss League for a season. And we've got some scout reports back. Curtis Jones, Billy Gilmore and Joe Willock. Billy Gilmore's probably my favourite, or preferred actually, mainly because he's Scottish. And obviously Rob Wallace is Scottish too. And if we could get Billy Gilmore and Wallace next to each other, that'd be great. Stand tackle of 84. 84. That's very good indeed. Five foot seven. Physicals look decent. Strength isn't that high, but... It's not massively important these days. Not in midfield, anyway. In defence, yeah, but in midfield, it's not It's not as vital. Uh, Curtis Jones, how good are you? Physically okay. Tackling's just not good enough, unfortunately. So that removes Curtis Jones. We're looking for a more defence-minded player, aren't we? Uh, with these two, still probably too expensive, unfortunately. Sangari, are you looking any good? Sangari looks like he could be decent as well, actually. So we will... We will wait a little bit longer, but Billy Gilmore does look like a genuine option. He's still pricey, though, but we should have the money to, to afford him. Uh, Julian Weigel is probably going to be good, too. Joe Willock's 80 rated, but a cam. And again, tackling is not quite good enough, unfortunately. Or I could try and train him, though. It'd probably take forever to train him into that position, though, which would kind of nullify the point. Uh, oh, sorry, Joe. I'm going to say no to you. Uh, Batty, are you looking like you've grown a little bit? Not as much as perhaps we might have hoped too, Sar. Not very quick, but it looks like technically in a tackle, at least as a CDM, could be pretty decent. So we'll keep keep him as an option. Okay, so actually, too, Sar, Gilmore, Weigel, they all look like, and Sangari, look like genuine options. I think Harry Winks and uh, Ginduzi are just going to be a little bit too far out the realms of financial possibility, unfortunately. So we will... Actually, I'm going to sim this game at home against Southampton. We'll see how good the side is in a sim. So we haven't simmed any Premier League games now. Where are we with our regards our level? Not right, not quite there yet, apparently. A 1-0 defeat to Southampton in a simmed game means that I'm not sure where we stand with regards to the level of the squad and the overall quality of the rest of the league. We were 19th prior to that game. We're 19th after that game as well with just the one point from the opening game against Crystal Palace. Perhaps would have liked four. From those uh, first four games, the two defeats, as you might have expected, the two defeats. But I might have liked to, to beat Crystal Palace and maybe a, a point against Southampton. Southampton, a very, very good side, by the way, not to be underestimated. Next month, it's just Newcastle, Chelsea, West Ham. Well, that's pretty straightforward. Right, let's see if we can get those scout reports back before the end of the month. Uh, and... Fingers crossed we can do so so we can make a proper educated decision come transfer deadline day. A transfer offer for Ivan Tony from Hatafe, which we will turn down. Tony's still going to have a part to play this year, absolutely. Certainly from the bench and in cup games, FA Cup only now as it happens, uh, definitely going to still be called upon. We Oh, actually five emails. That could be some scout reports. Perfect timing, Senor Scout. Donal Hickey, you have timed that wonderfully. Sangari, Weigel, Tusa and Batty. The scout reports are back. Right, with 10 hours to go on deadline day, who is looking like a genuine option? Sangari is 81 rated and not very... Ex well, I say not very expensive. It's not massively expensive. £29 million. Physically, looks very good. Technically, slide tackles better than stand, but still a capable player. That is a genuine option. Tusa. And not as fast as Sangarano. 
prefer someone that's slightly quicker, although he's better in the tackle. Stand tackle's much more important than slide tackle. And short passing's decent too, although not as good with the ball at his feet. Ball control and dribbling, not as impressive. Sangare in the uh, early to mid-70s there. Daniel Batty, 75 rated, although... Oh, I'm not sure he's quite good enough, Daniel Batty. It's a shame. I would have liked to have brought him back, and you guys would have liked to have brought him back, but I just don't think he's of the quality we need right now, sadly. Julian Weigel is 82 rated. He, too, really not very quick. Good in the... Very good in the pass. Tackling's not as impressive, but... I tell you what, Sangare stands out, doesn't he? Sangare really stands out. I think Sangare is the, the go-to, if not Billy Gilmore. Gilmore's probably... I wonder what their default potential is. Let's have a look, shall we? Billy Gilmore, I think he's mid-80s. Just having a quick look on SoFifa.com. Billy Gilmore starts at 71, potential of 86. Sangare, what do you look like? Sangare, what's his first name? It's Ibrahim. Ibrahim Sangare starts at 75, potential of 85. Okay, so they both can grow to about the same. And... I definitely lean towards Sangari for the role that we're buying. Gilmore is pro probably the sort of player that could replace Wallace. But Sangare is the sort of player that will suit the position that we want to buy in more so. That defence-minded player. And he's a about the same rating as uh, as Conor Gallagher as well. Not that Billy Gilmore is much lower. But we will... See, is there anyone I'd be willing to swap? Any strikers? I mean, if they're interested in Billy, they won't be interested in Billy Chadwick. There's no point trying to do that. Uh, maybe Jack Nielsen. He's the highest rated, or highest valued at least, of all three. Even though Elliot Andrew is the highest valued, he's highest rated, sorry. He's the lowest value. That's weird. I don't know if they'd be interested in any of those guys. Centre-back-wise, we've only got four. Not looking to get rid of any of them. Mm, no. And goalkeepers, definitely not. We've only got the two now. I mean, if they're, if they're interested in... In Nielsen or Elliot Andrew, maybe. Plus, obviously, a sizable amount of money. £28 million pounds plus Nielsen. Not interested in him. Uh, they're not interested in any of our players in return. Okay, but they have asked for £41 million pounds for Sangari. Now, that is a little bit excessive. £41 million is definitely more than I'd be willing to pay. You can stick to that price as much as you want. You are not getting it. 33, and look, I've come up a long way there. Three and a half million pounds is a big jump. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I don't want to pay that much. I really don't want to pay that much. 35, come on. Show some form of negotiation. 38.3, we're getting there. We're getting there. 36.5. It's basically halfway almost. Come on. Thank you. Cool, oh, dearie me. Pay us for your drive a hard bargain. Thankfully, his wages aren't that high. Only £19,000 a week currently, so one would expect that he's going to want... Uh, I'll say crucial, because he'll be in that starting lineup every week, or almost every week. And the board do want us to sign crucial players, so maybe this will help add one to the to that list. We'll accept no release clause. That's absolutely fine. I need to take my guy's moustache off, don't I? Because I've not got my own anymore. Thirty nine grand is fine. I'll uh, remove the bonus, though, if we can. A rather sizable bonus, and yeah, you can have an extra seven grand a week. Right, okay, really pleased with that actually. I'll keep these guys here for now, just in case we end up wanting to do something else in midfield. But we do have Ewing, of course, we could recall from loan before making any other midfield decisions. So Gallagher will go there, Main is definitely out there, and Sangari will go in, and that should hopefully, if I drop him back down there and change that to CDM. Okay, that's a significantly improved, even though overall rating is the same, for the role that he's playing, and that is a significant improvement. I like that. Four-star week for already. We could try and train him. Hmm, what development plan could we put on Sangare? I'm really not sure. Let's have a look. See where... Have a look at his stats in a little bit closer detail and see if we could try and train him up to be a little bit better. His pace is a little slow. Uh, his dribbling's not... But dribbling and passing could do with being a little bit better, and actually that would improve his stand tackle as well at deep line playmaker. Skill moves I'm not that bothered about, but stamina... Actually, I kind of like deep line playmaker to start off with. Because it doesn't do anything to his pace, but he's not needing to be rapid. But his passing could do with improving. 
and obviously his dribbling could do with improving, and his stand tackle is the lowest of his two tackling stats, and stamina is the third lowest of his physical stats, and jumping's not going to be as important because he's six foot three. All right, five weeks to, chain, to train him to a deep line playmaker. I'd be happy with that. What's he unhappy about? Team performance. Well, how about you help me on that front, Ibrahim? So the biggest transfers so far this window, with 10 hours to go, are Richarlison for 140 million to Barcelona, Dominic Calvert-Lewin for 95 million to Manchester United, and Jonathan David to PSG from Lille for 93.9 million. We've had so many transfer windows go above a billion pounds. I wonder if it's going to happen again. The way that this is flying up with 330 million spent in the first two hours, it may well do. And none none of those big deals so far topping... Wow, City have been busy. 163 million pounds spent. That's insane. We are over the half billion pound mark already and we have a bid for Conor Gallagher. Carlos Perez plus 150,000 pounds. I shall keep my thoughts to myself. Cheeky is one uh, PG-friendly rated word that comes to mind. Still, the, the, oh, that's not quite as big a jump on that occasion, but money's still getting spent. George Long has interest from Stade Rem. That's a no, though. George is obviously staying for the considerable future, hopefully even. For, oh, we're over a billion. Tottenham has spent 200 million. Goncalves. 102.3 million for Goncalves. Whoa! He looks great. 102 million from Sporting to Manchester City. We are over a billion pounds. We're at... uh, it's, they get bigger and bigger, these transfer windows. Still with an hour to go. Oh, Jesus Christ. 1.4 billion pounds on deadline day alone. Everton have offered me Joachim Mela plus a million pounds. No. A right back. No. A 1.4 billion pound deadline day. Mmm. Jesus wept. Bournemouth, 45.5 million pounds spent there. Arsenal have spent 110. Luis Alberto, Elvedi, Milico, and Insigne with Thomas Partey leaving them. Uh, Aston Villa has spent near on 70 million with Alvarez, Milenkovic, Lato and Elastondo coming in. Alvedi going out. Brighton has spent 40 and made 95 with Kakare and Mope leaving. Brighton, that, oh they bought in Divock Arrivi, I guess, and Crivelli from uh, from Norwich who was one of the top goal scorers last year in the championship. Okay, fair enough. I was slightly worried that Brighton was selling all of their strikers after having already lost uh, Edson, Odson Edouard and Tammy Abraham and now Mope as well, but... Hello, controller. But fair enough. They've actually uh, they've replaced they've replaced them with uh, at least someone. Uh, with Crivelli coming in and Origo. I don't know what position Pusan plays in. Uh, Burnley, well, quiet with only thirty five million pounds spent and forty eight million pounds made. Chelsea with Millie Tao coming in and RMB with Musonda and Stefan De Vrij or De Vrij going out. So replacement at centre back with M Millie Tao coming in for him. Palace has spent 52 million. Awani, Martinez, and Lazzari. Everton has spent 180. Am I in charge of Everton still? Donny van der Beek, Raphael Leao, Yari Vacheron, and Sirachi. All brilliant signings. Dominic Calvert Lewin out is going to be a loss for them, though. Branthwaite leaving the centre back. Husai at right back, and Veratu at left back. Big window for Everton. Fulham has spent 80 mil. Del Rosen. Goriaran, Barboza and Mestres coming in with Nyanyo, the centre-back, and Dominguez going out for 50 mil total. Diangana and Sangari coming in to me with Emmanuel and Cartwright going out. So a relatively quiet window for me too. Leeds have almost broken even actually. Hill, Parola, Branthwaite and Devive coming in with Llorente and Koch leaving. Leeds getting their cock out. Uh, Celic, Amavi, Sal and Canley in at Leicester with Klosterman and Ward leaving. Chaleta, Carr, Marais, and Anderson in at Liverpool with Carius and Origi going. So relatively quite one of them. City, a big spenders though. £265 million. Zagadou, Icardi, Rui Zatil, who I don't actually know of. Suchek and Goncalves. Wow. Silva, Bernardo presumably. Uh, out. Well, it has to be, doesn't it? Because David Silva's retired. 
Uh, Dominic, big window for Man United as well. Dominic Calvert-Lewin in. Sander Berger in. Frances and Donny... Oh, Donny. And uh, Danny Carvajal with Donny van der Beek going as well as Diogo Dallo. Newcastle, Haidara, Dagbert and Tart in with Joel Linton, Rugani and Almiron out. Tommy Asu and Luca Bacchio in at uh, Southampton. Shout out Luca Bacchio from the FC Köln series last year. With Stones, presumably John, uh, leaving. Dallo, Mount, Blazquez and Strakosha in at Tottenham with Deli Ali going to Real Madrid. Matip, Chair, Stevens and Kakare in at West Ham with Ale and Sutek out. Ale obviously is left in real life to go to Ajax. And Wolves, Holgate and Ale in with Mbemba, Del Castillo and Bartra out. As ever, a pretty damned mental transfer window in this save from everybody. £1.4 billion spent on deadline day alone. The biggest deadline day yet. Wow. Big, big, big wow. So that's where we stand right now with Pinto in at Cam, or back at Cam, Sangare in at CDM, and Bayer moved into the starting lineup at right back, who far outplays his 74 rating and should hopefully continue to grow well. I'm tempted because it's still going to take so long to train him as a centre back. I'm tempted just to keep him as a, as a right wing back, you know, and just concentrate on improving his overall. 16 weeks is in bad form, so uh, weak foot could do with going up. Sprint speed is only 69, actually. Okay, maybe we go for this then. Or attacking. Mm. Right, let's go for attacking win, wing back. Ah, that doesn't need skill moves. It's going to take longer. Let's go for inverting win, inverted wing back. Weak foot's going to be more important. I didn't realise his sprint speed was quite slow. I knew he had decent acceleration. All right, I'm going to commit then and keep Bayer as a right back. Now that Joshua Emmanuel... Because I guess the only reason we were moving him to centre was because we had Joshua Emmanuel at right back. But you guys wanted Emmanuel out because of his injury proneness. So uh, Bayer is in and in to stay in that right wing back role. Do I change him back to a right back from a right wing back? Maybe first. Let's do that first. Three weeks. That's going to improve his defending stats and his sprint speed. Okay, let's do that first. Change to an outright right back first. Uh, maybe I'll do the same to DeAndre Yedlin too, actually. It's going to take two weeks, although his stats are going to end up dropping soon. But he's only back up for now, isn't he? He's only back up. Right, okay. All right. I'm happy with that. I think that's a decent window. Not the most incredible window, but we didn't have much money to spend, did we? So I, I'm relatively happy with that. And should we need something in January, there is perhaps some to call upon if we maybe sell a player to replace a player. But £7 million is probably not a massive amount. But that's still a very capable squad. Wallace has grown again to 77. Lewis Potter is up to 84. Wilkes is up to 83. Barnett's up to 81. Burke's up to 80 as well. So he continues to grow, which is good news. That's a relatively strong side. And in tomorrow's episode, I'd like six points at least from Newcastle and West Ham. Uh, and then, well, I say six points at least. Six points at least from the whole episode. And I expect those six points to come against Newcastle and West Ham. Chelsea, the only home game though. But still, that's a difficult fixture. Right. Thank you very much for watching today, guys. Really appreciate the support. Please do continue to drop your feedback in the comment section. We can, of course, take, in, take on board anything else you have to say uh, later on in the season. Whether that be squad numbers or a potential transfers for the January window but for now that's all for today thank you very much for joining me I'll be live tonight from 6 30 ish on Twitch with some more football manager in the championship with Cambridge United so join me over there I'll of course put a little post up on YouTube as we always do but for now if uh, you're not going to join me on Twitch then I will see you back here I hope tomorrow at 3 p.m as always for another episode of Hull see you later